Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm really excited to have in my hands a Sato FA45 Special. It's special for several reasons. Firstly, for me, it's something I've always wanted since the first moment I saw a Sato 4-stroke and I heard it running, I've wanted one. And they're normally out of reach for, for to buy new in my price range, um, but this one came available uh, due to, sadly, the passing of a club member's friend, um, and this was uh, part of his collection. Um, so I I took this for a donation towards um, the uh, the estate uh, of the gentleman, um, and I'm really pleased to have it, and I'm looking forward to saving it and getting it running. It's also special because it has, um, unlike the standard uh, FA45, it has a higher duration, a higher lift cam uh, in it that produces a bit more power. Um, my plan is to try and use this uh, in the Fornia. Um, I think it's a really nice engine. Uh, the four-stroke will suit the, the classic look of the Fornia RF4 um, and its scale, appearance uh, and performance. However, this might be slightly underpowered, um, so I'm pleased it's the special uh, for the extra power, but we may still be under what I need. Um, but that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is to start a small series on rebuilding, uh, stripping, cleaning and rebuilding this Sato FA45 special. Um, along with a couple of other engines I, I picked up uh, from the same um, same gentleman. I've got a uh, an old Miko 35, a Merco 35 um, from the 60s, um, and I have an HB uh, 40 PDP engine here, um, again from a similar sort of 60s, 70s era, I believe. Um, I'm yet to find more information on these two. Um, all three are quite gummed up. Um, all three need stripping and repairing, but... I'm going to start off with the Sato first because I'm super excited um, to to have this and to get it running. Um, I've got some experience with full size uh, car engines. I've rebuilt a few uh, over the years, um, especially when I when I had a restoration workshop. I understand the principles. Um, I'm familiar with working with engine components, the precision and the cleanliness needed. What I'm not familiar with is this scale. Things on this are going to be tiny compared to what I've worked on before. Um, so it's going to be uh, a new experience for me, it's going to be a learning curve um, and I hope you enjoy coming along for the journey. On the surface the general condition of this engine seems to be quite poor um, but an important note is that it does turn. Um, now I tried a little bit uh, yesterday and it was a little bit gummed up uh, and wasn't turning so I just rocked it back and forth to free it up a little bit and within a few rocks uh, it moved but importantly um, it turns quite freely and I can hear there is compression. If I bring this close to the camera you might be able to hear it. So that's a really good sign, um, and I can hear the valves uh, opening and closing as well. Um, so I think my plan of attack is going to be just strip it down. Uh, I want to check the bearings and replace them if needed, um, and I want to clean everything. I want this to look um, as close to as good as new as possible. good in there that does not look very gummed up at all it's very tempting to um, give it an external clean put some fuel on the test stand and give it a run but it's a Sato I want to do it properly chrome valve covers just look great fantastic yeah, it's not coming off easy I wonder if some heat will probably help. Um, I'm just going to grab my heat gun. There we go. Nice. 
if I can't get them out first go I'm not going to try hard uh, because they're likely to round out the screws and break or both and then it will be unserviceable in the future at least this way whoa my bulb just blew right in my ear <laughs> Alright, that's the small electrical issue solved. We are with lower level lighting. Hopefully that's okay for you. Um, so anyway, yeah, I'm not going to force these pins out. Um, I'm not going to do everything I can to get them out. I'm just going to give them a go, ease them out. If they come out, amazing. Uh, it means I can service the valves. If they don't come out, I'm not going to force it. Oh, no, the first one. It's moving nicely. That's a good sign. That's a really good sign. Look at that. Perfect. Rocker arm. Amazing. be a good test to see if this glow plug still blows. piston doesn't look too bad either actually that looks relatively um, relatively clean just a bit of carbon build up on there um, the ring is still moving freely still got a good amount of squish to it so I think we're in for a winner here any pressure it's a little bit seized up there that's not moving freely at all um, so so this is what makes it a special um, the cam lobes are higher lift and duration or either higher lift and duration or just higher lift uh, than the standard FA45 um, I did read somewhere that this is the same gear from um, a 56, uh, but I've not been able to confirm that anywhere. There's obviously something keying the cam gear to that shaft in, before I can move that shaft out, but I can't see anything in there, um, so I need to look into that. All right, so I just took a little break to go and watch a few videos and do a bit of research on how to uh, get the crankshaft out. Um, and I also noticed actually uh, on the video, the uh, the hole that I thought a set was a set screw on the um, camshaft is actually for timing. Um, and there is a set screw on the front here that is holding the shaft in place. Um, so I'll do that in a moment. But for now, um, I'm gonna focus on trying to get the crankshaft out of here this needs to be really, really clean um, and heated up before I can drive out the crankshaft along with the bearings. Um, so what I'm going to do to give myself a, a fighting chance, I'm going to soak this in acetone for a good few minutes. Um, the brush is falling apart, so that's next to useless now. But what I want is acetone to get right in there and clean out the bearings. I want it to spin really freely um, so that there's nothing going to hinder me driving it out because the last thing I want to do is break it. use um, heat shrink tubing 
around here to do exactly the same job um, if I can't get hold of these boots um, or I don't want the expense of those. Um, it will look the same and perform the same, um, it's just a different material. a bit of partial success I tried drifting uh, the pin here out from the other way um, and it's uh, moved partly and, and come all the way so that's really positive to keep hold of the little Teflon shim so removing this crankshaft is proving to be quite a challenge um, it's been it's hot still uh, and I've been drifting on it as hard as I dare um, and it's moved a little bit and now uh, I can't rotate it uh, it could be to do with the heat as well um, but I suspect it's it's moved slightly and now it's got stuck um, so I'm going to let it cool down um, and give it another heat cycle uh, and see if that will help right so it's cooled down and I've given it another soaking acetone um, and it's turning again now so I'm not uh, I haven't damaged anything um, it is it's a bit rough now but what I think has happened is I have pushed the bottom bearing down a bit um, there looks like there has been a little bit of movement there so I'm just going to go again get it really nice and hot try and drift the top uh, the top of it down well that took a lot of force um, so fingers crossed nothing is too damaged on there um, I fully expect the bearings to be toast anyway um, but uh, as long as the crankshaft has survived um, I'm quite happy <laughs> Trying to work out how I remove uh, this pinion gear um, because the the back bearing won't fit over it. It's um, it, the diameter is smaller than the gears, and I thought this was a little grub screw. Um, turns out, actually, by the looks of it, um, I asked a few questions online, couldn't really find an answer. But looking at it some more, um, it looks like it's a pin that goes uh, into the crank, um, and the gear just slides over it. Um, there's no need to pull that pin out or anything. The gear should slide forward and it unkeys from the shaft. Um, I need to remove this spacer, then the gear should slide forward, this spacer should slide forward and then the bearing can be pushed off. I'm learning that heat really is your friend um, and these can take a fair bit of force. Um, this is still really hot but the I was able to uh, put it in a vice, position it in a vice uh, so that it was pushing this way, the vice was here and as I hammered down Well that was a lot easier than I had anticipated. Everything's taken apart ready for a really good clean. I've ordered some premium quality SKF bearings for the front and rear of the crankshaft and they should be arriving in the next couple of days. Is it just me or does anyone else really enjoy taking stuff apart? Join me next time to put it all back together. Thanks for watching. <laughs>